In this lecture, we'll study the necklace problem. We'll combine what we've learned about Mobius inversion with what we've learned about formal power series and derive a beautiful generating function for necklaces. Now, think of uh, the set of numbers 1 to k as an alphabet out of which we will form words. So, a word is just a sequence of letters from the alphabet. This is an alphabet with k letters and then a word of length n is just an element of the nth Cartesian power of k. Okay, so we'll write a word as w equals a1, a2, a n where a i belongs to the set 1 to k. That's a word of length n. And uh, so clearly a uh, number of words of length n is just uh, k to the power n and therefore the generating function is uh, we will denote it by uh, w of x summation n goes from 0 to infinity um, k to the power n x to the power n which can also be written as 1 over 1 minus kx. Okay, now a word is said to be primitive if you cannot, it's not obtained by repeating a shorter word a certain number of times. So formally we would say if whenever w is written as u to the power um, d where by u to the power d, I mean just take the word u and repeat it uh, d times. And that gives you a word of length d times the length of u. Then d is equal to 1. So, for example, the word 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 is not primitive. But the word 1, 2, 4, 3 is primitive. It cannot be written as a power of a shorter word. Okay, and as a first goal, let's just count the number of primitive words. In this table, uh, I've taken a two-letter alphabet, and for small values of n, I've written down all the primitive words of length n. Uh, there are only two words of length 1, and both of them are primitive. Of length 2, there are four words, uh, but two of them are primitive, 1, 2, and 2, 1. The words 1, 1, and 2, 2 are not primitive. For n equals 3, there are 8 words of which 6 are um, primitive. The words 1, 1, 1 and 2, 2, 2 are not primitive. When n equals 4, things get a little more interesting. There are, uh, of course, the words 1, 1, 1, 1 and 2, 2, 2, 2 which are not primitive. But there are also words 1, 2, 1, 2 and 2, 1, 2, 1 which are not primitive. And so out of 16, 4 words are not primitive and the remaining 12 are primitive. So now the question that we are going to ask is, uh, given n in general, how many primitive words are there in a k-letter alphabet of length uh, n? So let's let uh, prim n denote the number of primitive words of length n. This, of course, will depend on uh, k, the number of letters in the alphabet. And we want to derive a formula for prim n. Now, uh, the thing to realize is the following, that every word of length n can be uniquely written as u to the power d where u is primitive 
of length n by d for some divisor d of n. This is pretty easy to see and I leave it to you. But an important consequence of this is that the total number of words of length n can be broken up as a sum. It's a sum over all d divides n, the number of primitive words of length d. So we have this um, relation between prim d and the sequence k to the n. And now we can use Mobius inversion And what we get is prim n is equal to the sum over all d divides n, the Mobius function mu n by d multiplied by k to the power d. Here when I say Mobius function mu n by d, this is uh, the Mobius function for positive integers under the divisibility partial order evaluated at, um, so let's say, P evaluated at 1 comma n. So this is the what is known as the classical Mobius function which we have discussed earlier. Okay now let's come to uh, uh, necklaces. So uh, the main definition here is uh, that of conjugacy. Okay so let w equals a1 a2 a n. This is a word of length n. A word W prime conjugate to N is said to be conjugate to W if we can write W prime is of the form a k and uh, let's not use k here, a l dot 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 a n, a 1 dot 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 a l minus 1. Means that the word w prime is obtained by taking the letters of uh, w and cyclically rotating them. So we can imagine that we write the words, the letters of the word as uh, around uh, a clock with n letters and then equivalence a conjugation is this equivalence where we are allowed to rotate these or you can think of these letters as sitting around a round table and if you just uh, move everybody uh, by a certain angle you get a conjugate word okay and now the question is uh, how many such conjugate classes are there so we'll say that a necklace is a conjugate class of words. And the question is, how many necklaces are there? In this table, I've taken an alphabet with two letters once again and drawn all the necklaces. Uh, of length n for small values of n. You can imagine these to be necklaces uh, where there are beads of two colors, color 1 and color 2. Um, there are two necklaces of length 1. Uh, there are three necklaces of length 2. The words 1, 2 and 2, 1, they give the same necklace. And so those two necklaces uh, give one, uh, are, are counted uh, only once. And there are totally three such necklaces. For n equals 3, uh, you can see that there are 4 necklaces and if you work slightly harder, you'll see that for n equals 4, there are 6 necklaces. So besides the uh, primitive words, also the non-primitive words give rise to necklaces. But the point is that uh, the number of necklaces that you get from a word depends on uh, how it is made up from as the power of a primitive word. So the main observation here is that uh, fw equals u to the power d 
where u is primitive of length uh, let's say n by d then the conjugate class of u uh, of w consists of n by t words. For example, uh, if you take here the word uh, 1, 2, 1, 2, then uh, that's a word of length 4, which is made up of, uh, which is uh, the square of the word 1, 2. It's 1, 2 repeated twice. And uh, these two necklaces that you see here, this one and this one, these are the two necklaces that are in the conjugacy class of this word. And so from this, what you get is that the total number of necklaces of length n, well, so each necklace comes from a primitive word of uh, length d for some d. So it's prim sub d divided by the length of the primitive word. Okay, so we have now uh, derived uh, expressions for uh, <clears throat> prim d in terms of the sequence k to the n and uh, neck n in terms of uh, the sequence prim d. So in principle, we can compute uh, neck n for each integer n. So this denotes the number of necklaces of length n in k colors. Of course, it's going to depend on k. So now let's see how we can put all this together to write down a generating function for necklaces. So let's do this again in steps. So we have the word generating function. I'm going to take, I'm going to disregard the empty word. So usually we write w plus x when we disregard the term of degree 0. So this is the word generating function. This is summation n goes from 1 to infinity kx to the power n, which is just 1 over, no, kx over 1 minus kx. And now uh, let's look at the generating function for primitive words. So we'll call this function prim x and this is by definition summation n goes from 1 to infinity um, prim n x to the power n. Okay. So now we know how to write prim in terms of uh, uh, kx, uh, k to the power n. So we'll let's do that. So n goes from 1 to infinity, sum over d divides n mu of um, n by d, k to the power d. And this x to the n I will write somewhat fancily as x to the power n by d raised to the power t. And uh, just writing now n equals d times e, I can make this a sum over two independent uh, indices d and e. And it's always nice to have independent indices when you have a double sum. So I can write this as sum d goes from 1 to infinity, e goes from 1 to infinity. This will give me all n and all d dividing n. And I can write this as mu e because n by d is e k to the power to d x to the power e whole to the power t. And this is nothing but summation e goes from 1 to infinity um, mu e. And then what I have is the sum k to the d x e to the power t. So that's just uh, that's just this w plus function evaluated at x to the power e. Or I can write it more explicitly as uh, kx to the power e divided by 1 minus kx to the power e. Oops, this is k times x to the power e divided by 1 minus kx to the power t.
And now let's go to the necklace generating function. So let's call it neck x and this is going to be the sum n goes from 1 to infinity neck n x to the power n. Okay, what do we know about neck n? Well, we have here an expression for neck n. Let's just substitute that in here. So we'll get sum n goes from 1 to infinity sum over d divides n and then we'll have uh, prim d by d x to the power n which I will write as x to the power n by d raised to the power d. And again uh, if we uh, rewrite this what we will get is this will be summation um, e goes to, again we'll write n as d times e so we'll get summation e goes from 1 to infinity summation d goes from 1 to infinity um, prim d by d x to the power e raised to d okay so let's uh, so so what this is is if we let uh, f of x to be summation n goes from 1 to infinity prim n by n x to the power n then this can really be written as summation uh, e goes from 1 to infinity f of x to the power so if we take f of x to be the generating function of the sequence prim n by n uh, then what we have is that x times the derivative of f of x is just the generating function of prim n by term-wise differentiation. Okay, and this is just the function which we call prim x. And this, uh, as we saw, is equal to the summation. I'll just swap the index d for the index, e for the index d. Uh, and we have uh, mu d k x to the power d over 1 minus k x to the power d. And so that means that f prime x is equal to summation d goes from 1 to infinity mu d k x to the power d minus 1 1 minus k x to the power d. And now integrating this term wise this gives us f of x and f of x is going to be summation d goes from 1 to infinity mu d divided by d log of 1 over 1 minus kx to the power d. Simple calculus, yeah? And so what we get going back to the necklace function, neck of x is equal to uh, summation uh, e goes from 1 to infinity, summation d goes from 1 to infinity, right, uh, f of x to the power e. So we get mu e by e log of 1 over, uh, let's check, mu d by d log of 1 over 1 minus kx to the power d times e. And this is nothing but uh, summation. Now going back to n equals d times e, we can write the summation n goes from 1 to infinity, summation d divides n. And what we have is uh, mu d by d and we can take out as common log of 1 over 1 minus kx to the power n. Now let's try to understand what this sum d divides n mu d by d is. For this, let's go back and remember the Euler totient function. Phi n is the number of integers between 0 and n, k greater than or equal to 0, strictly less than n, such that the GCD of k and n is equal to 
one. This is called the Euler torsion function, and it's not difficult to show that summation d divides n phi d is equal to n. And applying Mobius inversion to this gives us that um, phi n phi n is equal to summation d divides n mu d n by d. Dividing both sides by n, what I get is um, summation d divides n mu d by d is equal to phi n by n. So this sum here evaluates to phi n by n. And so let's just put it in and what we get is neck x is equal to the sum n goes from 1 to infinity um, phi n by n log of 1 over 1 minus k x to the power n. Uh, if you want to make this uh, log thing a little more uh, explicit, you can write this as sum n goes from 1 to infinity phi n by n sum m goes from 1 to infinity just recalling what the expression for this log of 1 over 1 minus kx to the n is this is going to be kx to the power n raised to the power m divided by m.